Hey guys, welcome to the video series of data engineering on Microsoft Azure DP203. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we're going to talk about the row level and column level security in Azure SQL and Azure Snaps Analytics. And be more specific, we will be covering what are row level and column level security and how these can be implemented in Azure SQL or Azure Snaps Analytics. Uh, for your information, row level and column level can't be applied in the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 and Cosmos DBs. We'll start with the row level security. Basically, it's a mechanism to restrict records, read and write access based on the user context. As we can see in the image, like the row number third uh, is restricted. So what that means is like some users won't have access to the third row. And uh, what are the typical use cases for that? So like one of the most uh, typical use case in the real world is when people are sh have shared hosting or multi-talent uh, tenants in situations where common database tables used by multi multiple tenant to store the data. And in such cases, we want each tenant to restrict access to their own data only. We will see in the demo more, like it will be more clear, but the basic idea is like, some people will have access to limited data only. They don't have access to everything. So another example, like which we, which you guys must have seen in the traditional databases is where we want to control the access uh, to rows based on the user's role. So example is like, for example, in sales department, sales manager will have access to all the rows in the table while his reportees or direct reportees can see the records that applicable to them. Okay, the next is how we implement a uh, role level security. So it is done using the T SQL by using security policy. So if you look at the image, uh, so basically we need to create a security uh, policy, which you can look into the example shown on the screen. So basically how we create a security policy, it's like a create statement security policy and then followed by the policy name. It can like, I'm in the example here, it's direct name of the policy, but it can be schema dot policy name. So here the policy name is the player's security policy. And a policy basically contain two main elements. One is the security predi uh, predicate and predicate function. So if you look at the green box here, so this is the security predicate and the blue box inside the green one is the predicate function. So Predicate function is an inline table valued schema bound function. I know like it's, it's uh, sound very complicated. Basically it's a user defined function, which, determ which determines a user executing the query will have access to the row or not based on that uh, logic we defined. And security predicate is the one which binds that predicate function to the table. And uh, it can be of two type filter and block, but Block is not available in Azure Synapse Analytics. So in demo, we won't do the, uh, we, we won't talk about uh, block. We will use the filter one. And the yellow piece is basically, it's when it notifies that the security policy is enabled, is enabled here. Uh, I know like in this, uh, the image we have on the screen, it uh, we are not showing the predicate function, but we will see in the demo. Okay, cool. So let's jump to the demo. Uh, second, so I've already created a workspace for um, in Azure Snaps Analytics and also a dedicated, uh, a dedicated SQL pool. So if we go here and let me refresh. One second. Let me reload this. And this is the, um, like, I already like uh, created this script which we wanna use, but we will break it down into the, we'll look into this script one, like one row by one. So we'll understand what exactly we're doing. So let me copy this. So we doing uh, column level first, oh, sorry, the row level, let me copy this and copy it in my, one of my editors to make my life easy. Mm, let's change it to SQL. 
Okay, awesome. Uh, so like first 25 rows or even like first 30 rows are very basic, like you get it. So we basically create a schema named sales, then uh, we creating a table with the name of reason, like in that schema, which have ID, sales rep name, reason, uh, one second, there is a typo, let me fix this here, perfect. Then the customer name, and then we are inserting the sample data here, and I just uh, built a, like some random sample data, uh, where you can see we have ID, wrap names. So wrap names, you can see they are repeated, like Mon and Anna, they could be repeated, Cuckoo, Abby, and all those. And these are like um, random names I picked. And these are the location, uh, the reason we talking about, and the customer, then after that, the customer name. And I, as I said, it's a sample data, so I inserted some random numbers there, or random names there. And after that, we just simply looking at the uh, records in that. So he, till here, like you will be creating a table, like we're creating a schema table, inserting the data and just looking into that. So if we first do this, and when we are doing this, it's like a, we, we are the admin, so we'll see it as a, like it will be executed as a admin or like you can say DBO user. So far we haven't created any users, which you will see will create after this. So let me go into my uh, Zor. Okay. So currently we don't have any table in here. If we expand, nothing. So let's create a new SQL, new table. Okay. And we remove this. And uh, just FYI, like I'm running this for first time. So if if anything goes wrong, we can fix it here, but let's go one by one. Let's first create a schema. Run. That's done. Then create a table. Perfect, that's done. Now insert the records into it. Yeah, that's all good. Awesome. And now we just looking all the rows of that table. So you can look, we have 12 rows which we inserted and all this information. And as I mentioned, uh, this is like, a, this is as a DBO, like it's as an admin, like we haven't created any role or any user. So admin have uh, and admin have access to everything okay so let's go to our editor one more time and now let's create some users okay so we'll create four users so one will be the sales manager and the other four will be man an abi and koku these are like the random names i put it here uh, in our table for the sales wrap name so we're creating users for them so we'll go there so this is also straightforward, nothing confusing till here. So we can run this. Perfect, this is executed successfully. And after that, if you look like we are giving them read access to all the users. So when we give them read access, so let's go here, do this. So now all for sales reps and the sales managers have read access to it. We haven't uh, implemented the role level security yet. It's so far like we created the like we created the table, inserted some records, then created users and gave them read access. So now here comes uh, like the our uh, row security level thing. So uh, if you want, you can create a schema like a separate schema. I think like that's a good practice to do it. If you don't want, like it will be stored in this schema named DBO. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're creating a schema for our security policy. Let's we go here and enter this. So basically just simple, we're creating our schema. That's done. And this is our uh, predicate function. So what this function, like, uh, so for uh, let's, uh, before jumping to a predicate function, let's look. So this is our security policy. So we're creating our security policy name, my sales filter policy. And here, if you look at this, we adding filter predicate 
and this is our function which uh, predicate function and we are defining our logic like how we want to uh, filter out our users we defining that logic here and it's very straightforward if you look like we pass the sales rep name here uh, and then we return the rec like we return one for if sales rep name is the username so username is a, this is a like function so whoever is the user at that point it will try to match with that or otherwise it's try to match with username so with this simple condition we're filtering out uh, so for example if man is the user man should see only records related to her and same uh, for the other wraps so this condition uh, like this where clause is the logic behind it this is this is the how we filtering out things it's not very complicated if you think about it it's like it's returning one for those records where sales wrap is man and so it will filter out uh, those record uh, like uh, those it will like filter out those records which are not uh, have sales rep as man okay so this is pretty straightforward so what we'll do we'll first run this function our predicate function so we'll go here schema is already defined we run this perfect and after that we run our security policy and you can look into the security policy this is the policy name this is uh, the uh, pretty uh, like our predicate function and we are applying it on our sales region table and we keep it as on so if we want we can um, like if you want to turn it off we you can just put it off and it won't be applicable but here we are applying this so we'll do this uh, do it. Now let's create the policy. Awesome, that's done too. And now what we're doing, we're applying this policy on our users. Okay, so we go here, run this. second let's try one by one yeah for some reason we can't run all of them together and as I said like I never run this it's just I'm um, running for first time perfect and let's do the last one too and now, like now we will see how this uh, the security policy is applicable and how it works. So if we go here and if you look at this, so what we are doing here, we are executing, we, uh, we are running this query as a user as man and then we will see only records which man have. So if we go here, run this, So you see, so we inserted three records, so that's all we see. And at the end, if you see, I have revert this. So basically it means we have we back to our admin role. So if I do this again, like after the revert statement on line number 75, if I do this again, we should see all the records. Uh, oh no, my bad. Because the policy is on, so policy, is not applicable for DBO. So what we can do is like we can go to the sales manager. We can run this. Uh, line number 75 call oh sorry I didn't select everything so here you see we see all the records so now the policy is on and for sales manager if you see our condition like which says uh, 
if it's sales manager, like give us all records. So the, like give, uh, like it will return one for all of them. So this is how like it works. We can uh, uh, like apply this for other users too. You will see like if Anna, like if we run this, like we'll see only Anna's record, then Abby's and Cuckoo's. And if we want to like uh, disable this policy, we can simply run this command and it will d disable. And for cleanup, we can run like these commands too. I'm not going to do that. Like I want to jump to the um, uh, column level security, but you guys get the basic idea, like how it works, what need to be done. So main things need to be focused is on the security policy and our predicate function. And predicate function is like a, is a user defined function, pretty much like a user defined function you will see here. And uh, it's straightforward, nothing crazy. Like you return the table with schema binding. Here we are doing the binding thing. And what's the condition here is basically we are trying to match the username. Username is a built-in function in SQL, which tells you who is the user. So for example, in this case, when we run this, the execute, the user, name will return, like this function will return man. And in this case, it will return sales manager. So based on that, it will return one specific to the row and those rows are getting filtered out. So this is how we apply a role level security. Now jump to, and I'm going to attach this uh, script in the description. So don't worry, so you can practice along with it. Uh, now let's jump to the column level security. Okay. Go, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Uh, column level security, as the name suggests, and we have seen with the row level. So in column level, basically, uh, like it allow customers or users to control access on the table fields based on, uh, based on their like, um, based on the users' context or group access. So as you can see from the image, like um, the use, some users won't have access to the first column. And the typical use case, like which you will see a lot in real world is uh, wherever we have PIA, like personal identification data, uh, there we need column level security a lot. So data masking is one way of doing it. The other way is like, we don't show the data at all. Like we don't give the access to that column at all. Uh, basically the PIA data or like a sensitive data, you can say only authoritative people in like uh, in the teams will have access to that. It's not like everybody have access to that. And these uh, data points are generally like a, a social insurance number, social security numbers, your phone numbers, uh, even credit cards belong to this. So anything which can identify a user is generally fine, uh, belong to this category. And in most of the uh, financial services, like only limited people will have access to this, not everybody. And same, another example could be like healthcare, like in healthcare also, there is like a lot of sensitive information. So which only doctors uh, or, uh, or their assistant should see, not the billing department or accounts department. So in those cases too, like this is uh, very helpful. Uh, the implementation, the implementation of uh, column level is also using T-SQL, using the grant command. And it, it's it's pretty simple relative to row level security. There we need like a couple of things here. We just need the grant permission and which make our life easy. So here's the syntax. Like I know like it look a uh, bit bumble jumble, but like once uh, it's, it's pretty simple, like grant, what kind of permission we wanna give on what object and to which user. Basically this is the thing, like what kind of permission, which object, uh and no sorry grant on on which object what kind of permission and to what kind of database principle like with user to a group or something like that so let's uh, look this also in a demo very quickly so you will understand much better let me go back here i have the script for this too and if you'll see it's much simpler than uh uh the raw le row level Okay, let me copy this to my editor. Again, Control A, Control C. Over here, Control N, Control V. And we will go through this SQL very quickly. Let me change it to SQL. Okay, perfect. So here, um, 
I think like the first 20 rows are very straightforward, but we'll go. So we're creating a new schema named sales2, then we having a table underneath is uh, with the name membership, which have first name, last sin, last name, phone number, and email. So basically we have one, um, so sin is, uh, sin stands for social insurance number, which is pretty same as social security number in states. So uh, we, we creating a table which have sensitive information, then we inserting the information as a, as you can see, it's a dummy data. Like uh, I'm not using real social insurance numbers here, but we wanna test like how the column level thing works. So creating a schema, creating a table, inserting the report records, and then creating a user uh, with the name test user. And after that, we using this grant select on and to this and giving the membership to the, uh, sorry giving the permission to this user and if you look into this like very closely uh, the table have like first name sin last name phone number and email but we are not using sin here so if user try to access the table they should get an access so let's very quickly run this so i'll run first 20 records in one go because it's very straightforward, nothing complicated or surprising. So let's do, oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, let's go here, a new SQL script. Okay, I'll do this and I'll change it to our data text SQL. Okay, I'll run by run. We should be able to run it together. Let's give it a try. Perfect, we are able to run it. And let's very quickly check like what we have in there. So, I'm just checking whether like it table is uh, created successfully. I know like we, we didn't get the error, but it's always a best practice to check stuff. Okay, so we can see all four records here, here, and our sample data we can see. And now we will run this, okay, which is to give a test user permission only on specific columns, not all the columns, or we can say not, okay, uh, we need to do one thing here because we have multiple schema, so good practice to give the schema name and run this. Perfect. And now we are executing as a test user and we'll see what we get. Ah, uh, we should get an error because we're trying to run a query to see all the columns, which see, perfect. So you see here like the select permission was denied on column that's why we can't see anything and if we do this instead of uh, select star if we pick the columns on which we the user have permission we should be good Let's see perfect boom so we don't see the send or the social insurance number here so this is the way uh, this is how we implement the column level security so in nutshell, column level security is done through using the grant permission, which you can see grant. We give the grant read permission on this table, on these columns to this user. So it's really uh, easy to understand. Like grant is the reserve keyword, then select uh, is the, like we giving read permission on this table, on these columns to this user. And after that, like we impersonate the user and try to see if we have uh, the access as we saw if we do the star like we won't be, we get the error otherwise if we pick only those columns on which we have access we could and for the row level uh, the main, main thing we need to keep in mind is like we need to create a security policy and we need to create a predicate function and uh, which which is straightforward like our logic uh, need not to be very complicated it's like based on your role name and all those uh, one thing we need to be keep in mind, like um, uh, in row level, like things can get complicated if we have multiple tables, we're gonna join them and all those. So we need to be a bit cautious there. 
but if you understand your data well like it should not be a problem uh, so that's all for this video thank you um, have a good one